First of all, let me just say, I slayed doing the thing I thought I don't feel like I can trust anyone in this book so far. I feel like this book was made for me. Just falling in love with this cover. Oh my god. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. This week I am taking part in Do The Thingathon, which is the readathon hosted by Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction. Do The Thingathon is basically a week-long readathon in which you try to complete some of the goals that you set for yourself at the beginning of the year. Basically, it's May, we're nearly six months into the year. We're all probably slumping on those goals that we're motivated to complete at the beginning of the year. So Do The Thingathon is basically a kickstart to motivate you to try and complete some of those goals before we get to halfway through the year. So unintentionally I am actually reading two books that really fit this readathon for the week. So at the beginning of the year I set myself a goal of taking part in more buddy reads. Basically I just wanted to take part in more purely because they are so much fun and also because I really wanted to focus on cultivating my friendships online. I have so many amazing friends that I've met through booktube and I really wanted to focus on putting more effort into those and just having a great time on booktube. So this week I am doing a buddy read with Kat Kay and Tabitha and we are buddy reading Final Girls by Riley Sager which is of course a thriller and we all know I love a thriller buddy read. So it is Wednesday when I'm starting this vlog. I am starting it late as per usual. So I have read up to today's pages. I am all up to date so I'm on page 153. We did set it into pages for the week so we're reading about 50 pages a day. So yeah I'm on page 153 and I am absolutely loving this one so far. We're basically following Quincy who is one of three final girls. She survived a massacre in a cabin in the woods when she was younger. She went there with her friends for her friend's birthday and all of her friends were killed by a man we don't really know how or who yet and she was the only one to survive. However she doesn't remember the night at all. She remembers arriving at the cabin and she remembers running into the arms of a police officer afterwards. So we are getting little snippets of her time in the cabin as we go like little bits here and there dotted throughout the book. So we're starting to figure out more about what happened that night and I'm assuming by the end we won't know the full story but we're also following her in the present day as one of the three final girls was just found dead. So there's herself, Lisa and Sam and all three of them have survived different sort of massacres or killing sprees at different points in their life and the media dubbed them the final girls because just like in a horror film they were the three girls who were alive at the end and they kind of have this connection because they are the only three people who really understand each other and understand what, you, what each other has gone through both for the trauma of the night and also the survivor's guilt and issues with the media afterwards so they have this connection and that they can fully understand each other and then when one of them is found dead it is thought that it was suicide but then there are some questions brought up about whether it really was and we are thrown into a world of drama and chaos. <laughs> so yeah I am really loving this so far. There are a couple characters in this that I do not trust at all. One in particular I really do not like so I'm interested to see where this goes. I don't feel like I can trust anyone in this book so far. Like not even Quinn herself because obviously she's a bit of an unreliable narrator because she doesn't remember what happened that night. So yeah I don't trust anyone. I have no idea what's going on but I'm having an amazing time with it. I've been talking to the girls and they seem to be really enjoying it as well. So yeah having a great time with that one. My second plan for the week also fits a goal for Do The Thingathon. So at the beginning of the year I did write down a number of series that I really wanted to complete this year. I have not completed any of them I don't think so far but one of those was the Strange the Dreamer duology and of course I am reading Muse of Nightmares this week. We do have the live show for The Strange Along on Sunday so I do need to finish it by then and I'm really hoping to finish it well before then because I do not want to be in the same state as I was last month when I was finishing The Strange Dreamer on the live show. Although it was really entertaining to see my reaction at the end of the book live. I want to be more prepared this month so I am doing well so far. I am on page about 150 at the moment and I would really like to get to halfway tonight and then I've only got half of it to go before Sunday. Like I said it's Wednesday so then I've got a few days to make my way through it. I am on sprints on Maddie's channel for doing the thing I've on, on Sunday so I'll have a lot of time to read then but I'd really like to not be rushing with it and just enjoy my time with it. So far I'm absolutely loving it. I'll obviously not go into the synopsis because spoilers if you've not read Strange the Dreamer but I will link my vlog for Strange the Dreamer both up above and down below if you want to see some of my thoughts as I was reading that one. But yeah the romance in this book just absolutely kills me. They are so sweet and as I said when I was reading Stranger Dreamer, Minya 
who is one of the characters in this who's kind of like the baddie but she is the most complex character. I absolutely love the way she is written. I think Lady Taylor does such a good job of it and we all know I absolutely adore Lady Taylor's writing as well so really really enjoy my time with this one. But it is a little bit later on now so I think I'm gonna go and get cozy in bed and read a little bit more of Muse Nightmares. Like I said I am completely up to date at the minute with Final Girl so I'll be putting that down for this evening and just focusing on Muse Nightmares <laughs> but yeah welcome to the vlog these are my plans for the week and I will update you when I have more to say So it is the next day, although I am back in the exact same position, but I have just received some very exciting book mail, so I thought I'd pop on to show you all. I have been sent two different arcs by publishers today, and I am really excited for both of them. I have already opened them, so you're not going to see the packaging, but... I'm going to show you what I got. So I have a Glasgow Kiss by Sophie Gravia, I think. Obviously, Glasgow. Your Scottish gal had to get in on this one. But this is pitched as a Bridget Jones-esque novel and I love a bit of Bridget Jones. So I'm hoping this one is going to be a really fun time. So obviously A Glasgow Kiss, I'm assuming most people will know, is a headbutt <laughs> to a person's sensitive areas. That is a Glasgow kiss but obviously they're playing on that for this romance. And it says meet Zara Smith, 29, single and muddling her way through life as a trainee nurse in Glasgow. With 30 fast approaching she's determined to do whatever it takes to find love or at least someone to sext. Cheered on by best friends Ashley and Raj, Zara embarks on a string of dating escapades that are as hilarious as they are disastrous. From online dating to blind dates, hometown hookups to flirty bartenders, nothing is off limits. But when Dr Tom Adams aka Sugar Daddy shows interest it's a game-changing moment. Zara has had a crush on Tom since her first day. As things heat up between them, Zara can't help but wonder, is this love or is it another disaster waiting to happen? And it says it's filthy, hilarious and painfully relatable. Zara Smith is Bridget Jones for the millennial generation. It sounds honestly like so much fun. I'm so excited to be reading this one. I am on the blog tour for it so I will be reading it for a weekly reading vlog and then uploading it with my full review. This one comes out on the 10th of June. So we've not got long to go but it just sounds like so much fun. I feel like it's going to be really witty and I'm probably going to be laughing out loud at it or at least that's what the blurb is offering up to me. Hopefully it lives up to that. And yeah, it's a Scottish girl and a trainee nurse. Obviously I'm going to do nursing in September. I'm a Scottish gal. I feel like this book was made for me. So very excited for this one. And then the second book I received today was from Orion Books and guys I cannot get over how beautiful this cover is. So I have The Colours of Death by Patricia Marquez. Look at this. Absolutely stunning. I, I can't get over it. I can't stop staring at it. It's absolutely beautiful. But this one is a thriller. Sign me up. And this one says The Murder. In the Gare de Oriente, a body sits slumped in a stationary train. A high-profile man appears to have died by throwing himself repeatedly against the glass, but according to witnesses, he may not have done this of his own accord. The City, Lisbon 2021. A small percentage of the population are diagnosed as gifted. Along with the power comes stigma and suspicion. The detective. In a prejudiced city, gifted inspector Isabel Reese is hiding her own secrets while putting her life on the line to stop an ingenious killer. A killer who has only just begun. So it is a thriller but with a sort of fantasy twist I guess. But it just sounds really interesting to me. It sounds like it's going to be quite the page turner and obviously I'm on a major thriller hype at the moment so hopefully I'm going to enjoy this one. This one comes out on the 17th of June and I Again, I do have a date to be posting about this, but I can't remember when it is. Sometime over the next couple of weeks. So I'm really excited to be getting around to this one very soon. I'm just falling in love with this cover. But yeah, so those were the two books that I did receive today. I am so excited for both of them. Both very different types of books, but both like my favourite genres at the moment, which is perfect. So hopefully I enjoy them both. I also did manage to do a little bit more reading last night. So I am now on page 
263 of Music Like Mirrors, so I'm now over the halfway mark, which is amazing. I am still absolutely loving this book. Again, I just cannot get over Minya's character. Like, we've just found out a little bit more about her and her dreams and the poor girl honestly like you understand why she is the way she is like with everything she's been through and I think that's what makes her such an interesting character because one minute you hate her because she's being evil but then when you realise why it's really really difficult to hate her so yeah really really enjoying this one again and really excited to see where the rest of it goes I am going to be reading a little bit more today I don't know how much and I of course also need to read my buddy pages for final girls I have not read those yet so I'll be reading 50 pages of this later on and then hopefully a little bit more of Muse of Nightmares I don't know we'll see how the day progresses but right now I do need to go and do a little bit of editing so I think I'm gonna go and get comfy somewhere and do that and then I will get back to you when I've done a little bit more reading. Hello again and happy Friday I am actually just getting ready to go out we're gonna go to the cinema for the first time in months and I am so excited. It's my brother's birthday today so myself, Brandon, my brother and his girlfriend are all gonna go to the cinema and see The Conjuring 3 and I am very excited about it. If you know me you will know that I absolutely love horror films so I'm honestly so excited to get back in the cinema and go and see the third part of The Conjuring. I do really love The Conjuring films. The trailer for this one doesn't look the best it kind of gives me more like action adventure vibes rather than horror vibes but I've still got high hopes because the rest of the franchise has just been amazing so yeah very excited but before I head out I did just want to pop on because I did come home to some book mail today and I have absolutely no idea what this is. It is from Amazon and it feels like a book so I'm assuming someone has been very generous and sent me something and I am so excited to find out what so I thought I would just do that on camera just now so let's do it. Okay, what do we have in here? Oh my god! 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 Who has sent me this? Oh my god! So Christy, the absolute angel has sent me a book that I have been wanting to read so bad I actually can't believe I'm holding this in my hands right now but so Christy sent me this book and said this is actually one of my favourite books ever I had to get it for you when I saw it on your wish list please message me with all your thoughts also if you want to buddy read Christy 100% I will be messaging you ASAP because oh my god so Christy has sent me him by Serena Bowen and L. Kennedy. I have been dying to read something L. Kennedy recently because I am in a major sort of romance vibe and a lot of L. Kennedy's work seems to be way up there as like the best and I think the main one I want to read from her is the something about something campus. Off campus? The off campus series I think it's like about hockey players like each book is a, each book is a different guy in the hockey team or something like that I don't know but they're supposed to be really good romances and this is her sort of like collaboration with Serena Bowen and it is supposed to be so good. There are two, I think there's him and then there's us and it is an LGBT romance and it sounds steamy and amazing and oh my god I can't believe that I have this right now. So I think this basically follows Jamie and Ryan and or I think Ryan might be known as Wesley. Jamie Canning and Ryan Wesley who are like best friends when they were younger and then four years ago on uh, the last night of hockey camp during the summer when they were 18 something happened when they were drunk and it looks like it says Ryan Wesley's biggest regret is coxing is coaxing his very straight friend into a bet that pushed the boundaries of their relationship. Now with their college team set to face off at the national championship, he'll finally get a chance to apologise. But all it takes is one look at his long-time crush and the ache is stronger than ever. And it says, one night of, can one night of sex ruin a friendship? If not, how about six more weeks of it? That's so good, honestly. Oh my god, I can't believe I have this right now. I am so excited to read this. So, Christy, thank you so much. You know I will be doing a reading vlog for this one because it's supposed to be so steamy. It's LGBT. It sounds like such a good premise. Like, I can't wait to see what happens between these two because obviously there's more to it than friendship, but I'm assuming one of them doesn't want to admit that. So, yeah. Oh my god. I literally just flipped through the book and the first word I saw was moan. 
think that's setting us up for the rest of the book. Oh my god, Christy, thank you so much for this. I'm going to message you right now because I definitely want to buddy read this soon. So thank you so much and yay! But I am going to go just now. We're going to head off to the cinema. So I'll probably catch up with you tomorrow and let you know how my reading is going. Sunday. I did not update you at all yesterday but I did of course have the live on Kat's channel with Kat, Kay and Tabitha for our final girls buddy read which was a lot of fun and then we also stayed on a little bit afterwards and played some Fortnite. It was my first time playing Fortnite so it was a fun time. <laughs> But yeah, I am now all up to date with my pages for Final Girls, so I've literally got less than 50 pages to go. I've just got today's pages, but there was like less than 50 left in the book, I think, so maybe like 40 or something to go, and oh my god. Like, when I spoke to the girls yesterday before I'd read yesterday's pages, I said that this was sitting at a four star, but with the potential for five star, depending on how the rest of it progressed, and yesterday's pages... <laughs> Those were 50 five star pages. Like, oh my god. <laughs> the twist in this book, I'm still reeling. It was so well done. It was one of those twists that I did not see coming. But then, as soon as I read it, I realised that there have been so many hints and glimpses along the way. And it is actually kind of obvious once you know and I love a twist like that I love one that you don't see coming but it still makes complete sense and that you realize they have been setting it up the whole way through so yeah absolutely loved it cannot wait to read the last 40 or so pages of this at the moment I definitely think it's gonna be a five star read but of course it depends on how they wrap up the rest of the book but so far amazing so thrilling so exciting so creepy sinister all the best vibes and I need to read more Riley Sager ASAP. But right now I am on sprints on Maddie's channel for Do The Thingathon which might I say I am doing very well with this week because obviously I am definitely going to finish my buddy read and then I am also going to finish The Stranger Dreamer duology which like I said was one of the series that I wanted to read at the start of the year. So yeah at the moment I am on page 200. No I'm not. I'm on page 337 so I think I've got less than 200 pages to go I think maybe like 180 or something so yeah definitely gonna finish this while we're on sprints and then of course we have our live show tonight but I love this book once it hits about page 300 or something all hell breaks loose and it's an absolute ride like I did not see half of the stuff that's happened in this book coming but it is amazing but obviously I did give Stranger Dreamer five stars and at the moment it's feeling like this is going to be a five stars as well I just need to see how the last 180 pages or so go I have no idea what's going to happen but it is wild but in the best way so yeah I'm going to get back to our sprints just now and try and finish off this book hi guys happy Monday so I'm actually just coming on here to wrap up the do the thingathon vlog I did spend the rest of the day yesterday finishing off Muse of Nightmares and then of course doing our live show and then I was absolutely knackered and I needed a break so I'm just coming on to wrap it up now and talk about what I did during do the thingathon first of all let me just say I slayed do the thingathon on. Like I set myself those goals, I hit them, I completed it, I am so happy. So first of all I did finish Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor and of course I gave this one 5 out of 5 stars just, just like I gave the first one. I absolutely love this book. At the moment having just read it I feel like it's my favourite of the two but I also feel like if I was to reread Strange right now I'd be like oh my god no this one's my favourite and I think I'd just go back and forth to be honest. Like I feel like the second one is a lot more action packed and quite a lot more plot driven than the first one but it does still have that amazing beautiful Lainey Taylor writing that we all know and love. There was just so much in this book like once you hit page 300 I think it does not stop until the end of the book. It was all just so beautiful so exciting. The way everything was wrapped up was absolutely perfect the relationships in this the resolution at the end I was crying like this honestly I love this book 
so much. The duology itself is going to 100% be one of my favourite series of all time. They were just so beautiful, so well written. How does Lady Taylor do it? Like I don't understand how her brain comes up with all this but I absolutely adored it. I then also finished the final pages for The Final Girls by Riley Sager and it's another five star read. I absolutely love this book. Like I said before, from where I was towards the end of the book, it was feeling like a four star read with a potential for a five. And oh my God, 100% five star read. Like I think at the last time I spoke to you, I said that there had been a bit of a twist. I can't remember if I said that or not, but basically there was a twist towards the end that added it up to a five star. And I was like, okay, as long as this is all wrapped up well, it's going to be a five star. And then we had another twist, <laughs> which I definitely did not see coming. I just honestly mind blown. This book was so so good. One of my favourite thrillers of all time by far. If I ever have to recommend thrillers in future this is going to be one of the top ones on my list because it was just so good, so well written, had me on my toes the whole way through, really wanted to know what was going to happen and then the ending was just... I've said so many times before my favourite type of thriller ending is like a big bang twist and we got two big bang twists at this. Like I just... I can't. It was just so good. So yeah, five stars, 100%. Cannot wait to read more of Riley Sager's work. I do have Lock Every Door and another one of his on my wish list and I think I'm gonna have to purchase them soon because I need more of his writing in my life if it is anything like this. I've heard amazing things about Lock Every Door so I really want to try that ASAP but yeah amazing and of course it was so much fun buddy reading this with the final girls Kat, Kate and Tabitha. We have actually decided that we are going to make it a monthly thing so every month we are going to choose a thriller all to buddy read and then we'll do like a live show at the end of the month where I don't know if we'll be discussing the book or if we'll just do like reading sprints just as like a group. I'm not really sure if we've really finalised it yet but we are going to read a different filler every month so we're currently in the process of choosing which one we're going to read in June but I am so excited. Thrillers are so much fun to buddy read I feel because you just have like all these theories that you maybe bring up to each other and you're like oh that's a good theory I like that so yeah so much fun but that is my do the thingathon completed like I said I read this one because it was a series that I wanted to read this year so I completed that task that goal and then I also said I wanted to take part in more buddy reads which is what final girls fulfilled so yeah I am so happy I accomplished everything I wanted to accomplish this week and I had so much fun doing it obviously just want to say a massive thank you to Ashley from a frolic through fiction for organizing this little readathon I think it was such a good idea and it really motivated me to finish off these books and to complete some of my goals so yeah absolutely loved it and now tomorrow is June the 1st so it is of course whatever thon and I'm so excited <laughs> I honestly cannot wait to just read all the contemporary books my TBR pong for whatever thon went up last night I of course had the premiere for it which was so much fun quite a few people showed up and it was just a lovely lovely time everyone was so supportive and so excited for it so yeah cannot wait to get started on that TBR tomorrow because there are so many good books in it and I just don't even know which one to start with so it's gonna be a good month and I will of course be weekly vlogging throughout so you will have four whatever thon weekly vlogs. So yeah that will conclude this weekly reading vlog for now. If you did enjoy this video then do please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe for more bookish content from me, comment down below with any of your thoughts and feelings. I do respond to every single comment and I will see you in my next one. Mm -hmm.